them on Ancient. There's going to be a lot of questions that we have at the beginning of this game. But throughout the map, we will have our answers. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, if you've only just joined us, Fantasy are 16 rounds away from knocking out Illuminar from this competition. It's Ancient, a second map between the two, but a deciding fate map. Illuminar, it's go big or go home. It's their last chance. They've got a reverse sweep to stay in this event. And Fantasy going to be looking to stop it. They start, of course, on that. Whoa, hold on. Fantasy, Fantasy on the T-side side star. star. Even though they had the uh, the choice. It's a great mall towards middle. And, well, Morels, Exus, all the kills. Illuminar starting the CT side. Mate, the thoughts, the knowledge, the pre-game, the prep that I had, right? I thought it was just a little mistake. But the fact that Fantasy wants to start on the T-side... That's crazy to me. Crazy. Do you know what? I, I, and part of it might be that they're kind of matching what they were doing towards Dust2. They were kind of setting up. And, okay, if we're going to have our better side on Dust2, it will be the CT. So in this veto, let's just go for the same in towards Ancient. It's such a risk, though. And it's a risk that I don't really think um, I, I personally agree with. I mean, with momentum so heavily in their favor, you'd want to continue momentum on the stronger side. I mean, Ancient is the most CT side of map in the pool. And They've given it towards Illuminar. They've given them the opportunity for Illuminar to regain all of the tempo, all of the momentum that they lost in towards Dust 2 on the pre preferential side of uh, of Ancient, which is, yeah, question marks for me. Of course, not the greatest start as well, as that round was done in all of about 10 seconds. I fancy their 0-1 down. No investment in towards round number 2. They're just going to give up a second, more or less, over towards Illuminar in hopes of a bomb plant. All sorts going through the minds of fantasy now. Why on earth did we pick the T side, dude? It was probably the, uh, probably the first thing that came to their heads. Top up. Gonna find the one and only. Nexus looking to put a stop to the A push. And, well, that he does. Masks MP9 looking for some damage. I can get one back. So two kills with the Glocks here for fantasy. But ultimately a second round on the board for Illuminar. Creating the gap on the CT side. That's what they're looking to do. Early doors. Got to keep the pressure on. Illuminar doing a pretty good job at the beginning. Comfortable. I mean, that's expected, right? That second round on the board only should have gone one way. And of course it does. I mean, we do see the, the investment coming back on the other side for Fancy. This is the first kind of full test for them. And this is where we get to see what this T-side is all about. What the decision to start on T-side is all about too. Because for Fancy, it's such a risky pick. It's such a rogue pick too. I'm hoping they have an idea around it. See, AK, top up. Opening kill, catching Morels well off guard. Don't know what Illuminar's game plan is there, but they have lost a first, a second, and now a third. Relax and Tudson, both finding kills. Illuminar, despite, of course, it being a bit of a wild investment. Round three seems to be going the way of fancy, and looking at the money, I would have thought they'd play for a bonus a bit here, Nao. They went all guns blazing with the M41Ss. Punished accordingly. Fancy have rolled right through them. It could be flawless as well. This is the idea. This is what we're looking for. What a fancy bring to a T side. What is their idea to go for such a risky pick and start on the T side of Ancient when they had their choice? They couldn't start a CT. This is what they're trying to do. Destroying the economy of Illuminar here is massive. I think for Tuzz to just stay alive, he should realistically not move at all. Post up in towards mid box, try and keep that AK in play. If that falls, it's a, a kind of a, a negative line. What is a flawless round so far? And this is going to be flawless. Brilliant from Fancy. They're going to hit their first notch on the board. If Mars can save this rifle, there'll be a silver lining there, but it's been a pretty tough and rough showing from Illuminar. In towards round number three, and Fancy, of course, now within one, within reach and distance, with a broken economy over towards that CT side. A real good opportunity for them to. Well, catch them up, and if not, start a bit of momentum on their side. We know how good they are once they get that snowball effect in play. And this is already going to potentially set up a, a conversation of what we see in the early part of map number two. Masked, given just a little bit of room to save that gun, and he does use it correctly. Gets away with the M4A1S. A bit disappointing, though, that Illuminar go for a full buy, and it's one-by-one one pushes, you know? Like, yeah. the first kill happens, it's in on B, and it's one person that pushes solo. Second kill, another late push B, solo. Third kill, a late push mid, solo. You know, there's a common denominator between all these kills. Illuminar giving away freebies to Fantasy, and they've got a first round on the board. Of course, Illuminar, the natural reaction is just to rebuy, to try and cancel that momentum. But Fancy, if they're able to tie the game up, 
The show only just begins here for the Seaside. He does come through. Molly, sound cue heard. Their mast has been heard in towards close excavation. Relax on it all too well about this. The question is, do they expect Exxon towards rafters? I mean, a default being played by Fantasy. A massive exploitation would have been the A site. So out running around. Oh, brilliant. I can finding a kill. 4v4 could be in play. Exodus, I was thinking about swinging in. Does indeed. Doesn't get any kills for it, though. 5 versus 4 in favour of Fantasy. Once again, the roll of the dice. Illuminar go odd. In fact, it is even. Fancy now can just wind up with this man advantage. They know all too well in this position. As long as they play trades, they win the round. Illuminar have to get funky and inventive. Masked tries it. Not going to happen. 5v4, even lower HP for these Illuminar players. And the B site forfeited because of it. Top have got space to work with. Two masks going to rotate back over towards Astaire's position. But a smoke in his face. Denies a lot of his presence. A spam coming through might be good, but it gives away his ruse with low HP. He does when he met back with a spam of his own. Morales has to go huge. It's damaged dealt, but it's not the kill. Moss only good for one, two. The bomb should be able to go down. Dink, toe out low. Relax will take him. Excess against four. Bro will not let him escape for the save. An eco for Illuminar, but a second on the board for Fantasy. And this is it, man. The mind games, the, the, the game is being played. Fantasy, despite losing the pistol, they take a full eco. Illuminar match the investment in round three. And we're starting to see the cons of it. No money, no chance. It will be Fantasy to take the lead here on Ancient Teesside. And when you look towards the Teesside of Fantasy as well, or just generally at Teesside on Ancient, you can even make the argument that five rounds is good enough, right? I mean, we've seen a lot of teams from 10 5 halves turn things back in their favor with, you know, a strong starts to the CT. And the same can be said over towards Fancy. If they can get five, six, or anything more, that's a very, very good T side performance, which really sets up the foundations to success going on towards the CT side. Four rounds is all they needed, apparently, on towards Dust 2. So five or more over towards Ancient, I think they'll be absolutely fine. For now, the buy over towards Illuminar is minimal as it comes. No investment, no utility, no armor, nothing. Just USPSs and a gamble stack over towards A. So pop, the flank, X has turned, so he has to pull the trigger and find the first kill. Of course, this is all just a bait because Fantasy haven't really reacted off the back of this. Oh, Topa spotted another two towards Temple. And now they know, guys, it's more than likely going to be a stack. They're on USPs. I've Ooh. spotted more. I've given away an M4A1S, but do you know what? We've got the B site. This is around in our back pocket and Relax is in such a good position to try and catch out these remaining players. They might not even be able to keep this M4. He just gets beaten by timing. As uh, the M4 does cross, he does find himself one. A couple more stats to, uh, to pad here. For Illuminar, keep that M4A1S player it is the priority. It's more of a question on the other side as well. Do Fancy even want to go hunting? Do they want to try and deny anything being saved across? They know there's going to be a buy either way from Illuminar coming in towards the next. Is it worth their hassle trying to hunt down this rifle to deny anything being saved? I'd probably say not. If they can find one on exit, that'd be great. But in the grand scheme, keep hold of what they got. Park up. They are actually going for a little look there. They're going for a search over towards main. That M4A1S is pretty close to. The swing comes in. Tower will fall. Reach in for the trade. It nearly makes it a double in fact, but Aiken will drop him out. Nicely done. Very, very nicely done. Moving up. You know, at least making things a little bit expensive. Getting a kill or two is, is always going to be a massive... Forte, as you can see, two players buy up. Topa and Relax take a big hit financially. For Illuminar in general, it's M4s across the board. And, I mean, their fair share of utility as well to see if they can put Fantasy to sleep in round six and to tie things back up. Nice little smoke chucked in. Lands on top of the box. Topa opening kill. Does go back the way of Illuminar. Morel's getting aggressive. Finding another headshot. A great flashbang, though. Relax, I think that was... Self-produced, that kill. Three versus two. Man advantage once again. Established and enforced by a T side. Fantasy could be walking away with a fourth and wiping that CT economy slate clean again. 
Three versus two. Numbers favor Fancy. HP a little bit on edge. We see kind of Bro down to 57. Tons to take an attack as well, which means that n 4 a one ss do have the ability that I want up. But for now, space in the hands of the T-side. They have the decisions to be made here, and they're going to go towards B. They'll be testing the waters of Reeds. Masters deep flanking through A main. He knows all too well that no one's making their presence known here. It's just a question of can he get back in time to support Reeds. They know they're going for the B here now. Unless they wrap all the way back around towards mid. Hang on a second. Mars gets dropped and that opens up the A site. That was what we were looking for. Does he get caught on timing for Mars? He does. That's a free bomb plant. A free post plant set up. And potentially as well an early save call by Reeds. Gotta be, doesn't it? Got to be. No way you can get back into this round. No kit, only a molly. Three players, positions unknown. There's too many factors that when tallied up, I mean, the odds are next to nothing. And for Reitz, he realises a saved weapon is probably going to be a, uh, a pretty big requirement 4-2 fantasy we questioned their ct side st uh, their t side start especially after losing the pistol we were like dude like what is going on how why uh, what is in the minds of fantasy they shut us up quite quick here now and they're starting to acclaim some dominance here on the t side really nice from reeds gets the kill picks up the orb slips into the corner saves the gun Back and forth this round, though, Illuminar. Keeping things competitive, but that kill from Relax. Had it have gone the other way, Illuminar probably find an equalizer. Instead, it goes the direction of Fantasy, and we continue to live in their world on the T side of Ancient. A two-round lead is not something I expected to be talking about this early on. I mean, this T-side's been great. You look over towards Illuminar too now. I mean, the AWP in play for Mark, that's all they've really got. It's just pistols. And Relax should be able to farm over towards this B-side. Swinging his way forward. A 5 7 for one. A second as well. Hang on a second. Pistols are calling problems. They're all stacked here. And the bomb's down. Oh, man. It's looking good now for Illuminar, isn't it? Caught them so off guard. I can. One versus four. Finds the first. Still plenty more on the table, though. And for Illuminar, despite not being able to do it with rifles, they make things look easy with the pistols there. Minimal investment, maximum profit. Moss will drop the last, and it is a third for the Poles. Again, nothing should have gone in favour of Illuminar, but the gamble stack call was really good. And for Fancy, when you know you're coming against a, kind of a much lesser buy, to just try and go quick there about actually considering the approach that Illuminar are going to bring becomes so costly. Credit to uh, to Illuminar. The call was great from them. I think Fancy were a little bit too hasty, a little bit too comfortable off the back of what was a fairly decent resurgence from them. Four rounds on the trot. They were looking pretty good on the T side. They get comfortable and Illuminar punished them for it. A nice call. Provides to actually be quite problematic. And let's throw this uh, start to this first half uh, in the air just a little bit. Illuminar at least getting inventive with how they want to take the control. Problem is... The boost towards middle. I'm keeping my keen eye on it, I think. Number seven on the map, Mr. Exus. He will fall very soon. Tudson, top end of the totem pole. And it finds the opening frag. Illuminar down to four. Don't know what quite has hit them. And actually, I like this. We've seen a lot of possession of B for Fantasy. This time, they take towards the double halls. Tudson and Bro, positioned up, ready maybe to make contacts out towards A. Slower tempo here. Much kind of... Better approach by Fancy. Now the numbers in their favour. What's the decision? Bomb is still down. They've still got plenty of time to work with just shy of a minute on the clock. But they've lost control of mid. And relax. I think he's all too aware of this. Tower trying to fall back. If he gets caught in time and this becomes really awkward. His head might have just been spotted. But Mars with the AWP. Looking for pixels. But he won't have anything to play with just yet. Behind. Toe out. Walks in. Wanders forward for the frag. Topa needs to keep his eye on the flank. Instead, though, this is massive. He's got quite literally the timing of the round. He's wandered straight through middle. Toel's now holding the cross. So passive. Of course, if you're a B player, you don't expect this one. Topa just delivers the headshot immediately to Reitz. I can and relax making noise, but why are they heading B? 15 seconds. I think they needed to run towards A. Topa will find Mast. Now the kills start flooding in, but there's some blue to the feed, but it's just not enough from Morels. And the one and only going to try and deny the bomb. Topa swings to save his teammate. And that's a fifth on the board for Fantasy. A brilliant set piece from them. The stepping up again. 
much better. I think that slower tempo really works well for them. When they're able to kind of utilize the map control that they can get early doors, get a man advantage too, that's where things really start to play in favor of. Fancy and everything is starting to kind of work in the way we'd hope on a T side gamble select from them. We already mentioned coming in towards this, they picked in towards T side. It's so risky to do that on a map like Ancient, which is so CT sided, but the gamble's paid off so far. They're already up to five rounds. We're going to see attack pause called as they want to double down on this uh, momentum that they started to build up. But so far, so good. I mean, you say to Fancy, five rounds i said it'd be great they could pick that up it set themselves up quite nicely looking towards their ct side the way they're playing so far the you know opportunities to get six seven potentially an eight is really not out of the question so chances opportunities starting to whittle down already for illuminar Usually we say double digits is a comfy scoreline to sit on for the CT side. And a great shot to open things up. It's yet again, just walking in. Man advantages, a second one for Icon. Wanders out towards A. There's only one defender, Exus, ready. And he is in fact poised for a double. Tudson moves in the smoke. Behind it, back and forth between the angles. The bomb makes its way out. It's a triple rotate from Illuminar. And Tudson has got perfect time and smoke starts to fade. Exus, he's going to keep walking forward to try and find this kill. he got good timing as well. Tudson back turn. Oh no, he won 80. He's on a swivel. Doesn't matter. Exus still converts it. Numbers go in favour of the CT side. There is space towards the A site though through Donut. And they go for it. They should be able to get on towards the site. It's a question of now, how do they expect Morale's rotation? Come from Donut, not from A. Morels holding it. Good timing. Finds it. Topo 1v3. Knows that Morels is low. Lobs in the nade to try and take him down. Going to need a little bit more than that. But he does find Exus. That was the middle of the three in terms of health points gone. And the bomb, in fact, stuck. Where does he go? Oh, swings out towards CT. Spots nothing. Got to be careful of Temple. When does he turn his attention? Personally, I'd be playing the headshot angle. He's trying to work around it. Morels. He's able to walk out and seize him on good timing. Takes the kill and takes a fourth. Illuminar still behind, but the gap's starting to shrink. It's better, right? I mean, we're starting to see kind of positives coming out from Illuminar. It's a great call there from Exus. That kind of extension in towards made. Individual brilliance from him, but the extension's great. When he catches Tudson, he got a good amount of the information that he's necessary. The double spray down's perfect too. But for Exus, I think this when I kind of see him, what he was great at over towards the CT side on Dust 2, which was kind of his ability playing that flank or playing that kind of anchor role, I guess you could say, which he was over towards B. He would push rubber tunnels, get a lot of information, a lot of couple, you know, opportunities to get a kill here or there and buy some time realistically for Illuminar to rotate over or rotate back towards the A site which is kind of why they're posturing a lot of the time X is again stepping up huge it requires individuals to step up for Illuminar to find their success which is unreliable at times for me I can boost it up so early on as well not letting go of the shift keys. I think jump spotting now. Bro's just making noise. Just to bait in a CT rotate. Because again, it's such an unorthodox angle. Exus peeps his head around the corner. Sees nothing. Walks back the other way. He's in charge of middle and can't take his eyes off it unless needed. And with a smoke and a molly burnt out. Certainly now is the time Icon turns away. Not ideal. First kill in favour of Illuminar. Bro. Positioned up, wanders straight through the net. He slips, and Illuminar lose their main man. Exus, second top of the score sheets. Only Morel's ahead of him. And he's nicked out of the round early on. 40 seconds. The bomb yet to come around, though, towards A. And so, a little bit more time bought in for Illuminar. Relax and mast in an engagement. Needs to have a winner for Illuminar. They need to be on top. But neither way it falls, though. Four versus four. That bomb surely gets out, and the plants are coming just in a second now. Momentarily, and Marcel wrote it back over. The question is, does he expect him towards back plat? Bro posted off. He's waiting for the extension. Just hold down the four towers off, going for a peek. But Marst makes it work. Bro falling. 
Brings the numbers back in the CT side. Favor and Illumina. They've got space to work with now. The smoke will dissipate a topper in a precarious spot. And Tudson's labored spray is costly. So Park needs to find a couple nearly. Has the lineup. Toho holds his nerve. Two orbs to hold down the bomb. And a smoke doesn't in exactly enhance the odds of winning the round oh, as no. he blasts him down through the smoke. Toho with both remaining kills. It's a tie game at 5 all. And that game of chase that we talked about to get 10 5. Well and truly on. Gotta say, this one's starting to heat up. It's quite interesting. Much more even than what we saw over towards the start of Dust 2. Both of those were kind of just the showings of who could have the better CT side or, you know, who would have the worst T side. This is much more even. Only thing is considering is, as it is so CT sided, some people would even make the argument this is already good enough from what we've seen for fantasy. Can they continue this hot streak going forward? Probably not in this round. Only pistols for them. A bomb plan would be great. Gonna be tough to find though as they head their way back over towards excavation, closing on a lot of space, and Morales has to fall back. Oh, the AK. I thought it was gonna go for a little bit more. In fact, no, a mop up. Okay, another one for one. Alright, three versus three. Come oh, on. okay. Well, there's a bit more puncture there, Mars. The AWP, low HP goes for the swing. Gives them a very crucial frag. Topaz Deagle starts to slip out towards ramp as well. Smoke towards short. Meaning the AWP really is isolated only on long. And a second smoke dropped in. Gives even more cover for Topaz to wander through the Deagle. First bullet out the mag for Reitz. And it does indeed eliminate the Deagle. All down to the M4 here in the one versus three. A third smoke could be used if he wants it. The bomb is going to be his priority. Masked. He only wants the kills. It's a sixth on the board. And Illuminar take the lead. Got to mention as well. I mean, there's positive to be taken if you are fancy the fact that they made something work out of nothing. You know, they got a couple of kills. There's a silver lining to be said there. But all things considered, Illuminar, from what was looking dicey at the three versus three, get things back under their control. That's what matters. The Orc patch, you put in some good work there. In, uh, in the hands of Mars, we're starting to see him step up a little bit as well, where Morales was the kind of the leading figure for Illuminar. Mars has started to climb his way back into that conversation just a little bit. And if he can pop off the same way Morales has been at times, Illuminar can finish on a strong note, and a positive note, in towards this first half. Now, back over towards A. It's a gambler here from Fantasy. Bro, peeks in, Tal punishes. From behind, nobody expects it. Iken and Topa walk right in. Morels finds relax, and it could be a flawless seventh. Illuminar making statement after statement. And it starts to sting a little bit more now because Fantasy, they had Illuminar around their index finger. And they've dropped the ball completely, and it's Illuminar that are toying with their food. What a brilliant set round there from Illuminar. Pincer maneuvers. Had orchestrated the multi-pronged attack on A. Great movement as well. As soon as that first kill comes in, Exus just walks from B straight through middle. Has the flank. And it works nicely for the poles. It's 7-5. They are ahead with some margin now as well. Fantasy on Deagles. It is going to be a problem long-term for Fantasy as well. You know, morale and mentality in a little bit of a bad state right now. But for Illumina, a lot of positives to be taken from how they've... Turn things around on their CT side. If they can continue down towards the T, it opens up a world of a conversation to a map number three. But I think what we are seeing, Retro, is, you know, realistically just how better and well-versed Illumina are on this map. You're going to see the rookie errors creeping in towards Fancy, which is probably just a case of that they don't play it that much. And, and that's starting to cause a couple of issues here and there. Crossfire sets up, Exus damage dealt, frag to be found until Aiken, Mars, Tater, P, rings off for one. Those errors that I spoke of, Really start to creep quite considerably in towards the play. Topper will find himself one and bro gets very fortunate that he unscopes. In fact, Morel's on the site. It's a nice kill from Topa. That's the B site completely at siege. The bomb is so far away though. Relax, legged up, goes for the gun. Not punished entirely, but loses the most of his HP bar. Topa thinking of swinging in a game. Would have heard the AWP scopes. One on either side. You have to peek into the one of them. Low HP of Relax that finds the gun barrel of Toa looking right at him. A nice shot from Topa. Sick pre-fire. Bomb goes down 2v2. This is winnable now for Fantasy, despite it being a half-buy. There's definitely a world in which this works. I mean, bro, tucked in. as the smoke dissipates. Becomes problematic. Exus, big swing. Finds the head of bro. And he's just down to the Deagle. The M4A1S. He's opting for the hand cannon. Damage be dealt, in fact. 
Is he off for the rifle? No, he's still sticking with the deagle. Maybe the risk's not taken. And Mars's USPS will see it out. Illumina clinch back the round. But there was a world in which that slipped away from them. They're going to see out the half at the very least with an eighth on the board. And a much more even affair. There was a world in which Fancy nearly turned that back in their favour. Put a stick on the board. And can see a very, very even ending towards half number one of map number two. That got too close for comfort for me. Conditioning getting worse and worse. Second timeout called by Fantasy. What do you even talk about in these 30 seconds? Clearly, you're not the most drilled team ever to exist on Ancient. You've got an AWP, you've got AKs, you've got utility. All things that can contribute to a round win. They've been fairly successful out towards B, if I'm honest. Fancy at the end of this one. I'm hoping they go, we're going to fake a bit of mid control. And then they're going to send it right out towards B. And just take the fights to Illuminar. Because that's been working out. Look at the last round. You know how much damage they managed to do there. That's it. That is it. You look towards the penultimate round. What is the, the kind of the idea in Alpha Fantasy? I mean, they start to really fall apart on their T side. When they go slow, they should be picked apart off the back of Angels and Crossfires. When they go fast as well, they walk into Gamble Stacks more often than not. And Master will open things up with Relax Falling. Not the dream start for Fancy at all. This Fancy looking a little bit like a nightmare on their T side. As what was looking so good at one point, it started to really crumble from the front of them. I can Tudson, both with kills. Looking good now for Fantasy, despite being set the step down. Great from Mast. Going for all sorts with the AWP here. One nade, one molly. That'll be the end of his life, surely. Oh, missed shot from Tudson. And he's actually oh, no. picked up by Toel, who hits two. The second player didn't even know what hits him. And now it's Topa against three. And despite having the man advantage, it all sinks from there. Fantasy, second best again. Nine on the board for Illuminar. I said 10 would have been good. They heard me. They're delivering. Gotta say, I mean, this has been a, a, a little bit of a fall from grace on the T side from Fantasy. If they find anything in, in this last round of, of 15, it'll be great. But Illuminar really set the up quite nicely. 10 5 half actually is pretty good from how things are posturing. There was a, a kind of a conversation we were having earlier about, you know, Fantasy getting six, seven, eight rounds potentially on the T side because of how quickly they found those first five. But it's not looking great. Exus turns to the flash, finds Tudson for the first. Opener goes the way of Illuminar. Man advantage in their favor. Potentially double down, but relax with trade. Four v four. Morels. I don't know, mate. Flashbang doesn't work as a smoke. It doesn't block all vision for 10, 15 seconds. It's just something that blinds your opponents if they're looking at it. For Morels. Thinking he had an easy read. Instead, it's Toal that has to hold the fort on A. Great first shot with the orb. Molotov lobbed in towards big box as well. Hinders the pathing that Icon wanted to take in this round. It still creeps out Toal for another. His 12th kill on the board. And a very impactful round left to the two AWPs. But we've seen the potency they've had towards a bomb in the middle of nowhere. Tomal going to keep his keen eye on that one. Master swing out. 10-5 Illuminar. They win the rest despite a very decent start from Fantasy. They can't seem to close the show. And that leaves us with a lot of question marks. A very dependent pistol. But now Fantasy have that CT side after what we saw on Dust 2. Are we going to have more of the same? Are they going to be able to come back and make a recovery on Illuminar's map pick? We'll find out all of that lovely stuff after the break. Don't go anywhere. Second half, up next. Hey future pros, taking mid as a T can open so many options while playing Ancient. Throwing mid smokes from spawn is quick, but also means you could be locked out if the CT's utility is on point. So these mid smokes I'll show you will be great for a slightly delayed mid take. For this mini execute you'll need two future pros, two smokes and possibly a molly to be safe. 
Future pro number one, you'll be throwing the top mid smoke. To throw the smoke, position yourself so this wall meets the edge of this highlighted brick while crouched. Aim just below this dark spot on the edge of the shadow. Then jump through the smoke. Not too hard, right? Future Pro number two. You'll be throwing the donut, Lara, cube, whatever you wanna call it, smoke. To throw this, stand against the wall in the middle of this window frame. Find this gap in the trees and aim just to the left of the center of the opening. Then simply throw the smoke. Just like that, mid doorway and donut will be blocked. A note for these nades, it helps greatly if you have a fellow T somewhat holding the B lane so you can't be peeked from the ledge area. Also, if you don't have early info on the cutout position, lob a basic molly in there as a sneaky CT could really ruin your day. Well, a very definitive first half yet again leaves Fantasy second best once more. Will a recovery mission like uh, like Dust 2 happen again here on Ancient? That's what the next 15 rounds are here to find out. I'm Retro, drawn by Naokai, running you through the action, of course. Big Man Zarks observing on the B stream, or C stream, excuse me, today. And as we head into the action, which could possibly for the f be for the last half of the game, Fantasy on that CT side once more, relax, setting the tone. The man from the Wild West, Western Europe, because, you know, it's the European RMR. But the Dooley's nonetheless finding the opening kill. Morales going aggro, trying to get a copy. Big flash comes through, but it catches everyone, oh, to be perfectly wow. honest. Topper's done a job there with that one. That was Reeds to Morales' fault. In for the flank as well. It's one man left alive, but it's a flawless pistol. And a necessary one as well from Fancy. What was a dire end to their T side they needed to kickstart the momentum once further back on towards their CT. And there it is. Sixth collected. Deficit down to four, but the economy all in their favour. No bomb plant for Illuminar means, well, realistically, no response. Glocks. I think a very friendly and familiar face to this best of three has been those ecos on the T side in the second round. I'm just trying to think back, like, uh, how this one started. On Dust 2, Fantasy won both pistols, right? The one on the T side to go 1-0 up. One on the CT side, 2-0. Did they win the pistol here? Uh, on, the, on the first half? Didn't. I've been too engrossed in the CS to remember. I'm pretty sure they didn't, though, no? Because it was uh, Illuminar that went up early and then... They went like 5-2 up in the end. Yeah, I am right. Illuminar won the, right. the second pistol. So actually, it's been three out of four pistols won on the CT side in this best of three so far. And it lives up to that expectation once again. Illuminar 10-7 ahead. Fantasy, three rounds behind. But having won the previous two, certainly going to be looking good for them now as we develop into the full buys. Yeah, full response here for Illuminar. What do you find from them? Deficit only to three rounds. There's a real good potential here for Fancy to start to make something of this. And they've got an aggro off the back of their bone. It's a one for one. The MP9, it's a messy trade, but Bro finds it nonetheless. That got very dicey, and there is space potentially for Tower to work with, too. Three versus Art, two AKs and a Galil. Fancy not quite living in the same luxury. And 
minute left on the clock. So Al Exus moving towards A because Morels has taken all this control away from them. He sits in Temple. He's cleared out CT. 50 seconds. That smoke giving Relax all the ideas. Nade lobbed in. Not going to deny the bomb plant. It's looking pretty decent now for Exus as he punches in the digits quite safely as well. Ooh. Never mind. Tudson making it hurt. Yeah, Tudson is unfortunate to walk away with a kill there. So Exus one point of HP. Morel's on the flying swing. Or got off the back of it, bro, to fall. Does he expect the second body can make his way through mid? I think Morel's got a pretty good inkling. Low HP for Illuminar makes it a possibility, but Morel's got other ideas and Tudson's going to hightail it. Nothing to do with this one he wants. Doesn't expect X is in behind. One point of HP and he goes aggro. Illuminar, quite nicely, in fact, see themselves to 11th on the board. Now, unfortunately, I think we've had someone drop out of the server top, but... Needs to rejoin. We will be jumping into an ever so slight tech pause, but a great, great round there from Illuminar. Brilliant that they walk away with it, especially after the amount of damage Tudson did too. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit disappointing that Fancy don't pick up an eighth there. Yeah. Make it somewhat costly, at least, for Illuminar as well, but it's Fancy that walks off worse for wear, financially speaking. An Ancient is a map where, should you not have the money, you really start to feel that you are second best. Having a look at the map, if I'm honest, this looks nothing like Ancient. Like, I've actually never paid attention to this. Unless this is, like, some bits off the map as well. Like, I'm trying to have a read in. Now, that is Ancient. B site like on the sucks. right side, A site over to the left hand side. That's, that's Ancient. No, no, no. That's not yeah. B site. No. It yeah, can't it be, mate. That's stairs, mate. That, that, is, that is B site. He's, he's, Zarx has just circled something. What are you trying to circle, Zarx? I'm, I'm trying to figure out. No, no, that, like, look, that, so, that's, so one that's the temple here. On, on the right-hand side. And the left-hand side is A main. You can see the kind of the greyish bit right I see in the, the middle double of hall. I see the double hall heading out yeah, to A. Yeah. That's, that's the temple. Yeah. Bit. Yeah, oh, look on, on the right-hand his... side. Yeah. And that's stairs. Fair enough. And then you can see... Ah, yeah, okay, I'm with you. It, 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 Mate, why is there some, like, massive, <laughs> like, blob on the on the far right-hand side? It says, like, there's an entrance to B as well. That would be pretty cool if that was in the game. That's just back, back plat, like back, back, back corner, basically. You know, people post up with the orbs. That's yeah. what that is. Yeah, yeah. Now, that, now Zarks that whole is giving thing... us a tour. Ah, there we look. Oh, you know, Zarks, man, he's here for everything. He knows exactly what's up. So this is the bit that I was confused about, mate. That's a massive building, you know. Yeah, is is the it's a it's an Azteca. Oh, wait, that's not a pyramid. I I don't think that's the exact building. word. But uh, an Azteca building, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's what that was on the right hand side, that building ah. there. And there, that's stairs right there. Yeah. There we go. Really? <laughs> no, no that, that, that's, the, that's the position, mate. It's cool. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Like, and below it is like the B site, right? Like, we're literally flying above the B site yeah, right now. I'm Bob, with you. Yeah, there's there's Bob one, look Bob at two. him, man. Look at Zarks. He's actually so. Oh, fair play. Blob yeah, one there's a camera there for everything. And there's Entrada. It's either like right at the back there where like the bus stop is. That's where like it says that. that that's where like the Entrada oh, bit was. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm with you. So where we were, it's just behind B. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was another thing. I didn't know where yeah. on the map it was. It's been so. a lot of time no clipping around this map just to see, yeah, see what's Yeah, I was going to say, like, I've, I've probably been in a little more of like a competitive environment than you. Like trying to learn smokes, you know. I've been playing. I feel like you've probably played Counter-Strike a little longer. I've certainly been coaching, learning like, like nades, lineups, things like that. You just know more of the map about me, about the map than me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just stupid. I think it's the latter, <laughs> honestly. Anyway, back into the action. Everyone seems to be here. Finally, top of back in the server. On a 19, on the way. 7 to 11 in terms of the scoreline. Illuminar are going to pretty decent lead ahead of them, but their economy is not looking too healthy long term. Could be broken with a strong round here, but Tal's going to open things up. Spamming in. Middle. Topa only for one reach. Good trade. Illuminar. Making it look dominant out towards B. Kill after kill. Piece after piece. They solve the ancient puzzle. It's 12 on the board. It's no money for the CT side. It's an attempt at a save. Nonetheless, it's very much going to be a 12th on the board for Illuminar. And the gap to 16 shrinks even further. Fantasy chances of closing it in two look more or less depleted at this point. Illuminar. 
doing a very good job on their map pick. Got off to a slow start, but when they find their footing, man, do they know how to run away with this map. And this is what we said was the, the real kind of potential about where for fantasy, due to them essentially being a mix, right? You know, they've only formed just before this uh, the open call started that they're experiencing a competitive environment over towards this map might be limited. And this is uh, essentially why we're seeing the, the slight rookie mistakes slip in. You know, we're seeing their ability to hold certain positions be quite costly. And things like about the lineups, the crossfire setup for fantasy are pretty open where Illuminar can expose them for it. Over towards that B site, potentially even to be given space there is a bit of a, uh, a question mark. Credit to Illuminar. Four rounds away from pushing us towards a map number three of Nuke. One map, of course, to decide who gets eliminated from this RMR. Yeah, I think a lot of people at home would forget the context of this matchup if you've only just joined us. It is the loser of this best of three. Eliminated, sent packing, no chance at Rio. 0-3. It is the elimination match. I can, oh, oh my, my word, Zarks has done a brilliant job once again here. Look at the kills he has in front of him. It's like a kid in a candy shop. He doesn't know where to look. Is there going to be a knife kill? Is there going to be any chance at justice, redemption? Go on, yes, the knife is out. Picks up the AK, looks for a second. Icon, you genius. Any more, he'll be asking, as he's ready to take heads with Icon, as this is a no round way. that no other man could perform. It's a 10-second defuse. Totson will hold, but an absolute round of excellence from Icon breathes light back in favor of fantasy. I thought Icon, you know, going for one kill, going to maybe deny the bomb for a, a wow. few seconds, but that's it. That is so well played for Mikan. The knife is great. Little bit of BM. We love to see it. Then on towards the second, the communication from Illumina are questionable as well. That no one's even turned off the back of that knife kill. And then the fact that he makes it a third two. Iken has played this to perfection. And what a way to do it. Knife kill is great. Picks up the AK. The lack of turning from Tower as well is pretty questionable. And the fact that he makes it a third as well. I mean, so well played from Iken. And it really opens the story once again about what Fancy can do on towards their CT Ancient. Twelve eight. Fast towards B. Reitz is looking for spam. He's looking for damage. Looking for kills. Blood. Illuminar only see red because of the previous round. Tudson and Reitz going at it both in the kill feed. Finding damage. So out. Going to stick the bomb plant. It's safe from the cave position. Reach just going to hold things down from CT as well. So Fantasy left in a pretty weird one. Because not many times do we see this control taken by the T side. Quite parallel in the control that they have. Exus letting Icon run by. Takes his head off. Now they know one's on ramp. But Fantasy set down numbers. Relax. Gun barrel sticks out. It's an easy one for Toe out. And the last man left of Toe putt. One versus four. Too many angles. Not enough ammunition, not enough time. The round's done. It's 13. Illuminar clap right back with a bang. Yeah, and they're very close. I've seen this one. I can't see a water which they don't. Sopa will fall to the land of Exus on exit. As we mentioned, 13 collected for Illuminar. They're so close now. The way in which they're playing, the way in which they're kind of posturing themselves over towards their tea side. I can't see a world in which Illumina don't just see this out. It's been very clean, cut, concise from them. Very few mistakes creep in apart from that prior round. I think this is just kind of moment in time before we see ourselves on towards Nuke as a side or more or less a best to want to see who gets eliminated because fancy they are starting to struggle both on their T side and now of course similarly on their CT. I can have a good look with the AWP. The benefits of the knife kill. Stacks of cash. You can afford the big green. For Illuminar, that's no luxury that they have. And they're told quite quickly that I can still has cash in his back pockets. Spewing with confidence as well, it seems. Flashbang goes for the re- Look! Blind! Brilliant flashbang. Exus his own. And it's a brilliant entry from Exus. Illuminar just on pole position to take this map and to push us to nuke. And another nail in that fantasy coffin. Relax, Tudson and bro. Difficult decision to make. Do you want to even attempt at this round? If you don't, it's gun saved. It's one more chance if you do go for it. And it doesn't work out. 100% you'll be seeing it through to Nuke. We should be comfortable. I think Bro has been spotted though. Smoke will give him a little bit of saving grace on exit. 
As you mentioned, Illuminar up to 40. So close. Have a fancy so far. Can they find one upgrade? It'll be a huge positive here for Alax. If he can net himself an AK-47, a, a silver line is to be taken away, but that's for the easiest of them done. Rose will fall. X is to find Tudson. It's been made expensive as well on top of everything and the rest. And damage dealt both ways. X is to fall back over towards mid. And Illuminar up to 14. Nice and comfortably. Relax has found himself two kills on the other side of the map. So there is a, definitely a positive there. And he upgrades to an AK2. So silver lining. But yeah, as we mentioned, already that question of too little, too late started to ring out quite true. And with Illuminar so close, the, the chance of getting back into this game is so slim for fantasy. They've got a pretty lackluster understanding about how to kind of take that mid control. It's become costly when they do as well. And the fact that they're consistently losing that man advantage is just ending up time and time again then being spread thin that rotation from bro from the a site back over towards the b what we saw in that prior round was so slow as well that it meant that the retake was never a possibility eagle spam from tudson going for wild stuff through smokes never gonna really be successful especially when it is as blind as he was with the smoke grenade in front of him. Relax. Opening kill for Fantasy. I can get a profit as well as he picks up the AK as opponent dropped. Nexus dished out his 15th death. More crucially, Illuminar. Taken down a notch and I can. Brilliant headshot. Goes for a second. Aim punch will be his worst nightmare. Morels will trade. But again, it's just more information and an even bigger advantage for Fantasy to find nine. This should be a one scenario from here on out. I'm pretty convinced. Yeah, I can't see what a witch is, isn't right? Lower by. Relax, had to step up for multiple. This time he's cleared, cleared from black, back plat, may I say. And that opens up the site quite nicely. Should be pretty comfortable here. Rifle collected. One won't be denied. Does Tau even expect a close position of top of two? This does become slightly uncomfortable. Retaking their way back in. They've got numbers to work with. Actually... For what, what a decent post plant scenario. They've crumbled a little bit. Fancy will find themselves up to nine. But I still think the point stands that getting themselves back in towards this map seems pretty unlikely. Okay. I think the conditioning starting to show a little bit here that, well, obviously, Fantasy need the rest of the rounds if they want to see themselves through to a 2-0 victory. On the flip side of things... Individual excellence starting to shine up. I think of the Icon Eco round. Another kill for him. It was Relax that goes aggressive, I do believe. Fancy in general. Starting to poke and prod at the bee's nest. Have they antagonised Illuminar too much? Is this the round that they can capitalise and make it 15? Ensure a minimum of overtime. That's what this round will provide. It's a full investment for Illuminar. There are Galils. There is a... Little hit to the utility department. But a very similar situation for Fantasy here. Flash goes out. Breeds going to be blinded. It's a team flash though. Toa and Morels causing havoc. Excess eliminated. Icon's orb. Another kill for Icon. Nearly the third. Not going to make it happen. But two double kills between Bro and Icon put a very quick stop. So Illuminar having a chance of making it 15. Brilliantly done. Double digits of their own. Should they be able to find his last kill? Should they? Because Toal, he's got a double. And it's relaxed next into the guillotine. And Toal finds all three. Another clutch. Another chance goes missing. And Fantasy throw away all hope of getting it done in two. Ancient seems to be going the way of Illuminar. And it's another round. An individual prominence from Toal. Never should have gone the way of Illuminar. Especially with the opening double from Bro. And then the orb steps up for two more as well from Aiken. It's so simple for Illuminar. To, oh, for Fancy Mass to see how that round. But no. Individual peaks. An isolation of fights by Toal. And Illuminar extended the lead once further. But of course this time they're on 15. They are one notch away from seeing out this game. What a crumble from Fancy in that round. And this map specifically. Mollies, everything, chucked in, Illuminar, their last chance to make it look 
as definitive as it was. Mask with one, Topak doubles, triples up with the M4A1S, switches to the USP. It's four, on for the ace. Of course Topa lands it, of course he finds five, and of course Fantasy aren't giving up just yet. 15-10, what a play. The stories are done apparently. I thought this one was what? done dusted. And he somehow found all of five. As fantasy, get out to double digits. What a round from Topa. I mean, to find two or three is a massive from him. To get those fights and, I guess, convert those engagements. But to make it all five, never should have happened. <laughs> Pistol whipping too as well. You Mate, really do love to see it. Two with the USP. Yeah. Of all guns, the USP. And this is forced to Luminar to pistols themselves. And Mars, they'll open things up. Bit of space over towards the site. The question is, can they clear relax? Doesn't matter. Masked is gone. Toe out next to follow. And they fall like dominoes. A bomb plant is good for Illuminar's economy. But Fantasy make it 11. Maybe, just maybe. Fantasy will make me rethink my words, saying it is indeed going to be Nuke to decide things. Certainly, they're not done just yet. What a brilliant, and I mean brilliant, set of rounds there from Fantasy. They did allow a bomb plant, but notice, Illuminar's money, despite that, still not good enough to fall by. It's another half buy investment made. Still a little bit dicey from them. I think that is something in which uh, Illuminar are pretty, you know, cautious of, because it does mean that for them, of course, they're going to slightly go in towards this one, just try and see what they can find. They are building up a little bit of a loss bonus, but they need to be careful. There's a world in which they only have kind of one, potentially two force buys left before we consider OT on the cards, and that's not out of the realms of possibility. Totten turning at the worst time. Miss shot could get punished. Legs morels too. That's unfortunate. Lycan rattles one back though with the AWP. Needs to make sure he doesn't get a chance for the second AWP to find kills. It was in the hands of Masked. Lycan to bring it back to the CT side. Exus waddles forward. He's now going to go for it. He spotted the gun barrel. Lycan draws out the Deagle. It's another miss shot from the AWPs. Toalmi might even go for it to give it a go. But it's the Deagle of Icon to collect for fourth. On for the ace. Is it going to be another individual round? Tech 9 spamming through. Bro will take it away. But it doesn't matter. Fantasy just need the rounds. It's a 12th on the board. Only three remain to see if they can get it to overtime. At this point over towards Fancy economy is not going to be a problem for the rest of this map. In regulation, that is. So it's all about kind of how can they... I guess, continue this hot streak on towards the CT side. I mean, Illuminar, as what I was mentioning earlier, they've got one, potentially that second four spy left in, and that's all they've got. Lose this, there's a real good opportunity that Fanti are able to push this towards OT. And another scenario where we've seen a bit of a crumble coming through, which is something I never expected from Illuminar, not on this map by any means. I'm getting nervous for them. Never mind being in the server myself. Fantasy. Certainly dreaming of that comeback. And they can make it work. That's what this round 28 is to tell. It's a full buy from Illuminar. Nade. Pretty good. Reed's taking good damage. Relax. Up close. Swings in. But Reed's actually beats him. The engagement goes the way of Illuminar. Of course, now they're going to start to try and fight back, take control from the T side, which might just earn themselves the man advantage. Morels finds a second bro. He needs to find Toao as well. It's a good bit of damage. B control is what's important. He smokes it off. Does he move Tribe back in towards middle? Exus legged by the AWP of Icon. Who might just be able to slip by. Gotta be careful. Up close, Exus hits the shot. Bro and Topa, but Topa's found one. Good damage to Morels as well. All three of these players quite low on HP. This is doable. Exus needs to make sure he doesn't swing into that M4A1S because he will be punished accordingly. But through the smoke goes Topa. Does Morels expect it? No. Topa wins out the first fight. Exus could be next to swing in. Miss shot with the AWP. Do they know Toal's in Donut? He's the only man that can make the statement to deny a 16th. Well, it's good from Bro as he finds another. They know where Toal is. Bro taps again. He's holding for the angle. He's waiting for the chance. He jump spots it. He knows Bro's not on it. A second tap. Surely he peeks. He does. Bro finds it. 13-15. Important round. A really, really important round because it still continues this 
conversation we're having about how Illuminar, their economy, is still on a knife stage. They can buy in towards the next, but it's a questionable thing about it. The AK's armor, the utility slightly lacking. And then how do they set the tempo going into this round where they can't you know do too much to bait out ct utility they have to try and go for a slightly drier peak time and time again ak's come through we see the likes of kind of x's reeds mast even toe out all on very limited amounts of utility with a fancy they're swimming they're cashed absolutely fine not gonna be a problem for them we mentioned for the, for the rest of regulation it shouldn't really be an issue Illuminar still on life's edge and they walk straight in towards relax to one for one And again, it was Fancy that fell the man down in the previous round. And they've earned that right back. It's Bro yet again with a crucial frag. Swinging in, Reitz. Thinking about taking the fight to Tudson. It's the boost. It's trying to find the kills. Mars thought he had timing. Instead, Fantasy read everything in this round. Illuminar throw away a 14th. Nao, I don't think they're comfy letting Illuminar take it to Nuke. I think they want it done on Ancient. And the comeback that we've just seen certainly dictates that kind of thought. That effort that Fantasy have put in. It's one more required now. Toho against four to try and deny. I don't see it happening in this one. Which means we are going to go the full distance. Another close game. 29 isn't enough. They're going to try and do it in 30. And of course, the, the big thing you have to consider as well is that no bomb plot means that the buy for Illuminar in towards the next will be slightly dicey. It might just be Galil's. Of course, they've got lost bonus to work with, but even still, it's not exactly going to be the most comfortable phase if Toal can't get that bomb down. That's going to be easy, easier said than done. Make his way out of Donut. Careful of the angles. Bro, will see him out. And look at the money over towards that T side in the final round of the half, of the, of the regulation. They have got themselves kind of 3.8k if you're a wealthy man, which isn't really exactly where you want to be. That's opting for AK and full armor, or AK half armor, bit of utility. Galil full armor, bit of utility. Not exactly the most comfortable of space, hence why we see Illuminar core for attack pause. They are in a really uncomfortable space right now. And they're really on edge to potentially drop an out in a 2-0 fashion to Fantasy, and something which I never would have expected as well, because Fantasy's run of form, if this continues in towards overtime, I only see it going one way. Sigh of relief for Fantasy that they've got here. They cannot take the foot over, off the accelerator over to the brake. They've really got to hit it with full force once more. There's an auto sniper dropped in spawn, by the way. Just in case, why not? If you need it, it's there. Illuminar. Four Galils and a Mac 10. Certainly not a buy that screams success. But then again, sometimes it is these lesser buys that catch the most off guard. We'll see if Fantasy fall into that trap in round 30. It's do or die. It's the last round in regulation here on Ancient Fantasy. So far with a brilliant comeback. Can Illuminar silence them? Their last chance in regulation. But now, Illuminar, how do they posture themselves there? I mean, this is, it feels like such an improbable task for them. In towards mid seems to be the priority. Smoke will come through as well. Bro, got a slight gap on the, the left-hand side. Find one, mate. That a double spray down. Looking for the third, but he is dinked. Molly to try and squeeze him out, but he's already dodged past it. He sits over the top of the smoke mast. He might not know what hits him, bro. That is a sick round. Iken the fourth. Reeds against four. Against the odds. And against the run of play, Fantasy with an exceptional comeback. It all comes from the eco. Icon, a knife into a 2k with the AK that you see on your screen here. And that pushes us to a full 30. From 7-12 down, Fantasy, they have their say. They have their chance. And they have one more opportunity to close it in two. Can they get it done in overtime? That's what we find out after the break. Don't go anywhere. It's more than regulation on Ancient. Up next.
for the second time in this series, Illuminar have choked a beautiful lead. And look where we now stand. It's overtime in towards map number two on Illuminar's pick of Ancient, but things aren't looking too good for them. Fancy have a real good opportunity to go 2-0 and zero in this series. And of course, get their first win in the RMR. It'd be massive. And it's certainly, at least from the pattern of the previous map and what we've seen in regulation, Fancy don't look like they want to stop here on this CT side. A fight breaks out. It's an AWP against AWP battle. Neither team walking away with the man advantage instead. Fancy just with the information that there are two players on B. One was the AWP. One got boosted up. Second look. Icon Ooh. this time knows that one all too well. Mask gone. Reitz follows the same fate. Tudson getting his hands dirty out in middle. 3v5 and Illuminar give another two 1v1s. And another two chances that go begging. Fantasy on track for 16 to take the lead again. That's a cracker of a shot as well for Mikan. Opens things up. Relax. Can I find Morales too? He's doing God's work over towards A. Relax. And it leaves it down. Just the two players left for Illuminar. This side and this start towards... Well, round number one of OT. On the T side for Illuminar. Really is struggling a little bit. So our next just a lot to do. Not a lot to work with. In a two versus five, numbers are dwindling for them. But Exus will find himself one, and that's space over towards B. Wandering in, both players groups up. Topa, I think, just needs to wait for his teammates to get here. I don't think he should go for something on his own. Smart individual to listen to my wise wisdom words sometimes. But it does wise make more sense, words. right? Yeah, yeah. It's a smart decision, right? Play the numbers game. They've got the numbers. Work with them. That bomb continues to tick away, though. And there you go. First kill drawn. At least Topol waits for the cavalry to arrive. But how quick does it happen? Molly in on long. Doubled him. In fact, Excess finds the first. Two versus two. But from behind, the flank from Relax is good. Toal's taking his eyes off the bomb. And this gives enough time for them to slip in. Who's got the kit? Bro's on it. Is there enough? He's still on it. He pulls off. Why on earth did he do that? He would have had the time had he have stuck it. But he just didn't want to take the gamble. And Illuminar from a 2v4 snatched the first round away. Yeah, Fancy have crumbled that. I'm not too sure what the comms are there by any means. I mean, even the rotation coming through from the A site was so slow. I mean... Before he'd even made contact over towards back B, the bomb had already been half ticked. I'm not exactly sure what the, the comms were over towards Fancy, but yeah. I think it's probably safe to say they were an absolute mess there because there was no game plan about how they were playing that retake. In a, a 5 versus 2 situation, that should only go one way. When it drops to 4 versus 2, it's still not the end of the world. It still should 99% of the time still go in favour of the CT side. Fancy crumble a, a surefire 16th on the board and gift Illuminar. Around on T-side. A lot of question marks for me there about what happened for Fancy. I mean, I don't know. I think the only issue in that retake was how long it took for everyone to get ready for the retake. Yeah. I don't know. I'm really disappointed that... I uh, come off the bomb. I think that was... Uh, I, I'm not too sure yeah. what will happen there because, you know, either way, if you don't, if you come off the bomb, you're losing the round. It's, it's not like you're playing for economy or anything, right? So... Oh, I'm not exactly too done. sure. Yeah, I feel like we might have a round but reset. But there's damage. Reitz has taken damage. Yeah, that is very true. Is I think this round's true. live. I think you have to play it. I think it's live. Yeah, you got spammed, right? So you have to, yeah, they have to play off the back of it. The question is, though, is there going to be potentially one person not moving? Everyone seems to be alive and kicking. I, I'm, well, everyone seems to be moving. Yeah. So I think we're okay. My, my guess would have been, like, someone's just crashed. Like, non-responding. You've said stop. They're like, dude, we've taken damage. Or have you taken damage? The answer is yes. Okay, round has to play out. Masters just TK'd Morels. Uh oh. What? How's that happened? Oh, we went for the kill on Bro. And now the AWP of Icon in for a double. Exus in the one versus four. And Tech might just be the curse. It's 16 all. Fantasy equalized. No doubt there's going to be a Tech timeout after this round. Maybe a lengthy discussion to happen afterwards. I don't know what just happened. I mean, yeah, a TK something. in middle doesn't help. No, no, definitely. So, something went up there. I mean, obviously. Uh we could hear the typing, right? So we knew something was going the on. Clicking in chat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But as you mentioned, you know, Reese took damage. It's the rules. Rules are the rules. You've got to stick with them. Reese took damage to the Raz to play out. I'm assuming it was an Illuminar attempt to attack. But yeah, that was rough. That's really unfortunate. Costly, in fact. And of course, the team kill really doesn't help by any means. Early damage dealt to Morels. Down to 14 points. And Topper, he could just fall back. 
Brilliantly done by Fantasy to earn these early advantages. Flashbang. Let's hope it don't swing. You should know, you should know all too well about that. Mask just going to let him wander into his crosshair. Gets the kill. 4v5, sure. Two of these players are low for Illuminar, so... Certain cautions still have to be taken. So I'm going to get the boost over the top. Orp still holding the angle. Tudson should know the fate with the Orp being there is certain death. I can... Great shot, though. Hitting Toho. I thought he was going to be second best in that fight, but the Orp just too quick on the trigger, it seems. Still spam coming out. 55 seconds. This has to be a B play. I can wander him forward, though. Gets aggressive at the right time. Could trap the bomb carrier. Slow attempt here. I mean, for Illuminar, need to be careful. All peaks out. Mask gets punished. The 804 back. Aiken just going to group up. Doesn't need to play. Too aggro here. With Exus and Morales taking considerable damage. It oh, should be comfortable. Like and he's it. picking them apart. This is just an excellent round from the all pup. Could it be one more? I mean, he's going to get the biggest giveaway. It's all the audio cues. Tries to bait the shot. Very nice first shot. Does take down the big green. Tudson's response leaves Fantasy up around. However, their T side was quite lackluster now. And I think that's yeah, going to be agreed. something that we're going to see yet again. Is It was 5-2 at one point. In favour of Fantasy, they lose eight consecutive rounds on that T side. Statistically, they won one and three. That would be enough to push them to second overtime. Wouldn't be enough to close the show. Need two out of three here from Fantasy if they want to guarantee themselves a first win here in the RMR. Boss to be done. They do have the advantage. It's just about keeping it, doubling it down if they can. We mentioned their T-side was lackluster, but so is both sides. And that's all about start. Aiken, he's found a form of his own over towards this overtime, it seems. As Mars gets picked off again. Mars has been really struggling since coming in towards OT and towards this map. Middle. It is theirs. For the taking here, Tudson. Got to be careful because he's got the bomb on his back. So that's an extra added penalty should he go down. Fancy. The last thing they need is to be penalised having that man advantage. X is going to wander out in middle. Tudson going to take the fight. And there you go. That's the bomb coughed up. Toal. Helping his teammate. It's a crossfire set diligently by the CT side. Topa's still getting his hands dirty. Toa in one with response. Bomb can be picked up by Bro. Two versus two because Icon's found another now. Does he know that Reitz is on the site? It's a 1v2 here in the steps. Wow. Icon hits the shot. 18-16. Map and series point fantasy. What a brilliant round from Icon. Icon's loving life in the server right now. What a shot that is. Brilliant individual performance from Icon is pulling tooth and nail this fantasy side across the line. They want to take a 2-0. And they are one notch away. Illuminar are crumbling. The replacement side who came in for benched heroes are so close to dropping out 0-3. They wanted to make a statement that they deserve to be here. But so far, it's quite muffled on Ancient. This certainly wouldn't be it either. Two times you had the lead. 11-4 and 10-5. Both times if you lose it. It's just heartbreak for Illuminar. How disappointing it would be. Minute and 35 sets the difference up. And even if Fantasy loses, they still get another chance. Reitz up close. Two players here. Flashes over. Icon undetected. Goes these CTs and they pressure the issue. And it's taken care of very nicely. Morel's eight points of health, but he escapes with his life. Good pressure. I mean, for Illuminar, that's what we kind of needed to see different from them. Step up in terms of aggression, look for map control, hunt for areas that work in their favour, and that's another prime example. Swinging the way forward, Morales and Reed's got one apiece, and as you mentioned, even though they take, they take damage, staying alive is the priority for Illuminar here. Now all they have to do is play the numbers game. They're not going to be spread thin, they're not going to be in a, a position where they get caught off guard. They should be comfortable to see a 17th on the board. And what do Fantasy do now? I mean, how do they try and regain any sort of control? I mean, I think it's just got to be a bit of a B-pop, you know? You haven't yeah, got any just, control just towards A. You've only got aggro, single right? smoke, single molly, single flash. Play it like a pug. Play it like an FPLC game, some would say. I don't think FPLC players quite do that. Just rush every <laughs> round. I mean, that would be fun. Masked. Giving Tudson no fun in this round. Morels dishing out the painter. Bro, last man left. Relax here. One versus five. Bomb in no man's land. 
falls at the first hurdle anyway, Reitz has got him covered. 18-17, map points, series points still. But if Illuminar win it once again, then we are going to go to double overtime. I'd like to say that now, it's something that we noticed on Dust2, both of us picked up quite nicely on. The one thing that Illuminar were good at when it came to their CT side of Dust2, what was it? Early aggression. Pushing. Pushing. Yeah. Getting Excellent. those so info plays. And this round, they do exactly that. They go aggressive towards B, they take control, they find the damage. More crucially, they're getting kills and they're rewarded with another round. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's something in which uh, Illuminar are very good at using their advantage. We saw it a lot in towards Dust 2. It was X is pushing through B into upper tunnels and you get information. Even if there was no one there as well in terms of kind of... Uh, any players that's still information that okay they're not going for a b hit let's go stack a rotate back play two towards middle you know or maybe one one towards middle one towards short two over towards long we know they're going for some sort of an a hit because there's absolutely no presence over towards b and a similar scenario there if they had pushed down ramp and found no presence they know they're going for an a pop it's so simple but it's so effective and it works it's something which exodus has provided to be so good at so far and this time he's deep in towards donut taking the initial point of contact nade won't do much to toe out. It's just a warning sign that we are here. Icon. Oh, mate. He did spot him. I thought yeah. maybe Icon was going to get away with a boost. It would have been criminal. Toe out seems to have known. Maybe as well they heard the boost happening from Donut, right? Like X is here in the, the steps. You know, if you press space bar, it makes like a little rustle, right? Of yes, yeah, yeah. Whatever's on your body. I'm guessing the clothing. That's like meant to be the sound cue. I'm not an audio en engineer. I'm just a dude that watches Counter-Strike, so I couldn't tell you what it is, but it does make like a, a plasticky noise, right? So... Maybe. That's the reason why. 18-17. All in the air. 50 seconds to separate these two sides. Question is, can Fantasy get it done in single OT, or will Illuminar push us to a second? Topa, Intel's Excavation. Space to work with here, but Morel's going to be a tough one to clear. This is a rough one. I mean, how do they play this? Time is dwindling. It's 30 seconds to work with. What's the decision to be made here? Fancy have no control, and they're about to use the man advantage. Exus pushes, finds Topa, and now they've got a hit B. That's all they can do. There's three players here, and a miss Molly and Cubby. In fact, no, it does land, but Reitz is still alive, and they know they've got to clear it out. 17 seconds. They've got to get pushing, but it's into the jaws of Illuminar, and while Fantasy found the first, it's a confident double from Illuminar. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Like dude, no. <laughs> Just man, when we were seeing I was so okay, excited. I'm assuming it's double OT. Uh, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, it has there's to be. Not, and it's not a world in which Fancy have turned that back, but that's unfortunate. Yeah. Do you know what the nice thing is? I do believe, yeah. like, there's no Go TV delay because obviously, like, we have the cameras on and whatever usually. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, like, we can just get the game paused. So, it's not like we're going to miss out on any of the action. Exactly. exactly. It's just double OT. That has got to be the worst <laughs> way it happens, though, though. Like, out of yeah. every single way it could. It was, uh, exactly. You know, I was chilling in my chair. I was getting ready for double OT. I was full reclined. I was enjoying the Counter Strike. Yeah. And then we just get hit with that. And it's like, dude, no. The game crashes. Yeah. But of I course, I have to reposition it's... myself as well. I sit like this with my car. Yeah, so I like I feel like you're like back. you know you know Rops when he plays Counter Strike. And it's just yes, forehead exactly. Pan. Like that's <laughs> that's that's what it is. So uh, here we go. Hopefully, we're gonna get back into things. I do believe the awesome. uh, the games crashed and they didn't pause. The cheek of them. The cheek. The cheek. The absolute. Cheek. Can't believe but it. What we can say though is go on. Illuminar, who it was looking like they were gonna crumble out of their own map pick. A massive resurgence on towards the CT side. I think what we're seeing now is the battle of who can have the better T side. That is literally the, the most simple thing. Who can, yeah. If someone puts up two rounds on their T side, I think that's probably good enough. We are back on the way, ladies and gentlemen. There's already been an engagement. It's a four versus four. Lumen on the CT side. Low HP. A top oh! find a double. Double push on ramp. See you later. Mars going to find Icon. Don't think it matters. The result of the round, I don't think it will change all too much. Unless this Orb of Masked, it's solo towards B, and it needs to go nuclear. Two kills would be enough. Not a single one to his name. It's Topa's hat trick. It's Topa's realm. And it's Topa's world. Second, well, second OT, first round. Going to fall in favor of Fantasy. Where was that in the first OT? Where was that when yeah. we needed it to win the game? Of course, magic number we're looking for is 22. But as I said earlier, I think if any side pick up two out of three rounds on their T side, I, see that, I think they see this one out. That's a great start for Fantasy. It should have been 
I, I start off a fancy earlier as well, where they kind of choked that one out in the kind of the two versus four scenario where the retake over towards this site worked. I can't see it happening here. Tell so I will swing. Topper. What a round from him. Four kills to his name. As fantasy make it 19. Like I said, 22 is our magic number we are looking for. That's a great start for fancy on the T side. Magic. Absolute magic from fantasy. Question is, can they make it a second? If they do, of course, for those that don't know, I think OT in competitive usually is, what, 16k? Yes. Uh, in, like, every other rule book, Because it's the Valve rule book. obviously it's the RMR for the Major, it's 10k overtime, which means the CT yeah. side, if they lose two rounds consecutively, are punished massively for it. And that is the enjoyment. And Illuminar realizing this, they're going to need a round. And the rabbit out of the hat comes from Excess. It's a double kill. Topa yet again in this double OT. Delivering pain to Illuminar. But not quite shedding the same results as he had liked in the previous. Toal finding relax. And it's Iken and himself against four. Now it's just a bomb planter. And while it does squeeze out the C4 plant, it's Illuminar that tie the game up. 19-19. An interesting start towards double OT. I think that was a little bit of a rough play there from Fancy. They tried to go, you know, step up the tempo off the back of a, of a win. And this is what we see from Fancy. Well, we see it quite a lot across this series. In which they find success. And their initial decision right off the back of it is just a full send it. I, I'm not exactly sure exactly what's happening there. But, I don't know, rough call from me. I, I feel like they play a lot better on their t side when they're slow, methodical. And they approach things the way they're probably meant to. Rather than just trying to rush down on a site. Hunts. Hey, Hope. 19 apiece. This time, Illuminar, a lot of mid control they've got. Let's see. Fantasy need to play another wild card like they did in the first OT, like they did in the start of the second. So, well, holding things down with the AWP. They need a CT smoke. Where is it? Where is the smoke from Fantasy? The AWP punishes for it. A flashbang toe out. Getting aggressive. I like this angle. Could be a complete oversight here from the T side. Excess from behind taken down. Topa and Relax follows the same suit. Bro, going to take a fight up front. But it's only one, I think, going to be found for Fantasy on the T side. A clutch from Bro just seems too distant. And indeed, it's Illuminar that make 20 rounds. Well, big problem. We said whoever else the better T side performance should be able to see things out. Who can get two out of three? And unfortunately, Fancy is only the one for them. Now, Illuminar, swap hands. Their attempt to try and find two, as of course, that's all they need. 22 is our magic number. Fancy need a flawless showing on their CT if they want to find it in double OT. Or, of course, we can set things up for a third overtime. Now, we've seen quad OT already in the RMR. We saw that against Game of Legion and FaZe. How is this one going to pan out? These two sides, they seem inseparable. Let's see it here. Relax, opening things up for fantasy. The CT side doing it the right way. Only chucked in as well, Lexus. Giving his util over to Toal. Maybe he's looking to get aggressive for a Luminar hit. Either way, ooh, tag damage. That's going to be vital information given up to that CT side. They know another player's lurking in and around B. Somehow down to 65 points of health, bro. On the other side of that wall, Molotov goes in. Tries to take the fight. Morels will win it out 4v4. The man advantage untangled here for, for, for Illuminar. They've got to get a move on. Yeah, damage dealt as well, both the ways. In Morales, Tobal, not looking too comfy in terms of their HP. Same thing over towards Relax. Tobal Moscow, I go. I like the initial forefront here to try and take a bit of damage if he can. Tobal for the first, swinging in. Relax makes it one. Not able to find a double, but that's still space created. And it's information, but Topa is back turned. Mars is taking him down from ramp. He thought Iken had it covered. It's two warps on the retake. Morales on site gets taken down, but the bomb of Mars. It's gone. Away. Nowhere to be seen. Out towards what? eight. What do they do here? I mean, Fanti have no idea. Bomb will go down. This retake's going to be tough. Honestly, you've got to take an M4. I hope one of these players... Yeah, there yeah, we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Picking it up. 
just play the trade game here. They know yeah. they're against an AWP, right? Just play it, it numbers. Needs, it needs to be the M4 that goes first. They've baited out the AWP shot, so they now know that Masked is on the left-hand side of sight. Couldn't have crossed back towards main. First kill. It's a leg shot. Good damage done. No scope tried. Icon closes the gap with the USP, and the second AWP recouped for the CT side. It's 20 all. A little bit closer to comfort, but of course it goes the way you'd expect the CT side picking that one up with all tied square. Now, look who can have the flawless showing for the remaining two rounds in OT number two. Or of course, if we start setting things up for an OT number three on the cards. For fantasy, they got a little bit closer for comfort. Luckily, they played the numbers game and lucky a leg shot came through as well. Unfortunate for, uh, for Mars, but... It's what it is. We'll be able to reinvest in towards the AWP, so all things considered, not too bad. Bro. Slips into the cubby angle. Oh, oh missed shot from Masked. It could have been massive. Toe patrols are nays. You've always got to expect a second on cave control. Always. He doesn't. And the direction now turned once again back level to a 4v4. It looked like one-way traffic for Fantasy at the start of this round. Instead, it's all lobbed up in the air. Bro jump spotting, having a look. Seeing what he can find. He's trying to park up some ideas here for Fantasy. How do we get ourselves back in the game? Limited utility, I'm smoked off. We have to rely majorly on... Oh my god! I was going to say on our instincts, and that is a perfect one from Bro. Massive damage through the mid smoke. Illuminar, 50 seconds left. Got to get a move on, and they want to make it towards A. Yeah, it doesn't hold him, but even still, there's space over towards the A site. They can get more or less get out there for free. Crossing out of main is going to be tough, but a boost stop will give them a lot of room to work with. A Tuds, and he's so cautious of Temple. Bomb will go down. Gonna buy some time. The flash will catch him. Then I'll force him off the angle. Now, of course, a retake. Four versus four. Numbers even. HP dwindling over towards Toe out. We're still good space to work with. Third of the time already cooked on that bomb. Fantasy need to make their introduction known. And they need to make it a bang. For Morels, he's going to draw one soul. A second away. The orbs are back in business, though, for Fantasy. It's a 2v2. Toho up close, Icon. It's a no-scope. It's a great shot from Reed. Tudson needs to collect the last. But I don't think it's going to happen. A tap of the bomb. Another tap. An orb drawn. No time. No chance. And Luminar with 21. That's a great post plan from Reeds as well. So well played from him and he's staying alive. With the AWP in play is massive. But that's all about just buying time. But there's one thing that has to be mentioned there. And that's another showing of exactly what we can talk about. For Fantasy, the time in which they take to retake a site is so slow. They give themselves no time to work with. No room for error. No room to try and figure out any time, you know, any you know, players where they're posted up. I mean, we saw that happen a couple of times in towards OT number one. We saw it even happen in regulation on their CT side. That's another prime example. The fact that they can only tap in the bomb where they can tap and have to take a pop shot. If they force off the angle, the round's done a dust. And that's exactly what happens. Even if Reach 4 makes absolutely no difference, bomb still goes off and... Yeah, Fancy, they're kind of their own worst enemy there once again. They were so, so slow in terms of the retake. So slow in terms of the rotation. And they've given up map point over towards Illuminar. They are one round away from forcing us on towards Nuke, our decider in this series. Fantasy need this. Otherwise, indeed, double overtime and the comeback would mean nothing for Fantasy. Morels, massive damage taken to Utility early doors. No smoke, meaning if that molly was any closer, he'd be burning alive. Fortunately, not the case. HE lobbed. Reets. A little bit of tag damage. It's a FAMAS in cave. Already starting to see the issues with the full buyer fantasy, fantasy, excuse me, here. Having lost the previous round. Tapping away towards Donut. Bro and Tudson buddying up to try and get ready. Not the case so far, though. Slow, methodical, well-timed from Illuminar. They spend the best part of a minute figuring out where they want to go. And they spend the next 10 seconds executing a plan. Toe out. Doesn't quite go upward for him. Kind of sideways. He kills one. Also dies himself. Topa, flash off the angle. Space towards Cave, giving away. Exits his angle. Tudson, none the wiser. And this could just be the beginning of the end.
Exodus has been great. He's so good in terms of a lurking role, and he's going to do it once further. All he has to do is park up. Does Aiken even attempt to clear this? Probably not. And down he'll fall. Two remain for the CT side. Make that just one. It's the open transition. It's over with 58 points of HP. I can't see a world in which he can turn this back in his favor. You know, one versus <gasps> two, but he finds oh, a leg no. towards Mars. No way. Now that makes this all the more manageable. 34 kills. Orb drawn. Reitz would be the first to take the fight. Bates out the orb shot from Mars. Can't hit it. Ladies and gentlemen, it took us two overtimes, but Illuminar finally get their response. A third map of Nuke on the cards to determine who stays in their road to Rio and who is eliminated here. What a brilliant performance from both sides. But it is indeed fantasy second best despite an amazing comeback. And Illuminar get their shot at redemption. Brilliantly taken care of here on Ancient. A close game, but there could only be one winner. And indeed it does.